Hey, Rick here at MathLight, and I uh, want to talk to you about uh, something that happened in my pre-algebra classroom on this Friday. So we're talking about division, and we're doing sine numbers, and whenever I talk about division and sine numbers, I always want to get into zero. I just want to make sure that my students understand what happens when you have division involving zero. And so, of course, you know, we start off with what's zero divided by any number except zero. Not a problem, most of the kids are good to go and they understand that of course the answer is zero. So we understand that you know, zero divided by four is zero. But what I really want them to, to get a grasp of is why the answer is zero. So I'll do something like this. I'll take just a simplistic division problem, 12 divided by four. And I'll go by the door and I'll say this. I'll say, all right class, so our room is able to hold 12. All right, so how much can our, whole, our room hold? 12, all right, great. I'm gonna start throwing in fours. And so I'm gonna start throwing fours in and you tell me when to stop. And you'll tell me when to stop when the room is full. All right, so you got it. So how much does the room hold? 12. How much am I throwing in? Four, all right, you guys ready? And I'll make a motion with my hands, chucking something in the door. And I'll say, okay, that's one, which is four. and two, which is eight, and three, which is 12. Of course, I'm just going one, two, three, and they yell stop. I was like, stop, why do you want me to stop? The room's full. Oh, the room's full? Yeah, the room can only hold 12, you threw 12 in. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, how many fours did I throw in? Three of them, yeah, 12 divided by four is three. So then I'll do another example, maybe 15, Divided by five, all right, room can hold 15. I'm gonna start throwing fives in, all right? Let me throw a five in, all right? All right, one and two, and it just so happens I pick three again. You usually don't do that. Um, and the same concept, so we go over it a couple times. And then I say, okay, now the room holds zero. And of course, I'll have this written up on the board. And I'll say, now the room holds zero. I wanna start throwing four in you tell me when the room is full and I'll go to make that motion to chuck it in and they'll yell, stop, stop. And uh, they kind of have fun with it. And I'll say, stop, you mean I didn't even start yet? You don't want me to throw anything in? No, why not? Because the room can't hold anything. I said, yeah, exactly right. Zero divided by anything except zero is zero. Then we get to the fun one. Four divided by zero or five divided by zero or anything except zero divided by zero. And uh, I really enjoy this one because I'm really trying to get my students to get a good comprehension of why things are what they are. Um, you know, in one of my blog posts down the road, I'm gonna talk about um, division, you know, why do you invert and multiply? And I'm sure you know why, but do we bother to teach our kids? But anyhow, it's besides the point. Let's stick with zero here. So division by zero. Now, I understand there are some purists out there that don't want to say that anything divided by zero is infinity. And I understand why, because you can't go back by multiplication. Again, for example, and I know you know this, 15 divided by five is three, right? And five times three gets you back to the 15. And you can't do that with infinity. So I understand the purists don't wanna say that the answer is infinity. And that's fine. I teach my kids that undefined is one of the possibilities here. But I really want to try to get them to that concept of infinity. And it begins here, continues with slopes later on when we deal with slopes. And I'll try to get them to understand that a vertical line has an infinite slope. And of course, if they go on the calculus and things like that, infinity is a big part of life there. But I want to start now and I want to get that understanding in their thinking. So again, think about the room model and think about chucking in. So again, I would review with them, okay, so I've got 12, you know, maybe I'll chuck in twos now. And I chuck in, you know, six twos and they tell me stop, all right, great. All right, well now we've got a room, we've got four divided by zero. So how much does room hold? Four. All right, now I'm gonna chuck in nothing and you tell me when to stop. And I go to the door and I, and sure enough, Almost every time I've done this, and I've done it numbers of times now, I've been teaching for quite a few years. But, you know, the first time I'll go to chuck it in and somebody will yell, stop. Because they want the answer to be zero. And I'll say, stop. You want me to stop? 
And I'll, I'll say to the class, you want me to stop? And you know, the rest of the class, no, no, no. Why not? Because the room isn't full yet. Okay, so I can, I can go, yes, go. And I'll chuck in one, and I'll chuck in two, and I'll, I'm chucking, and I'm chucking, and I'm at the door, man, and I'm really just, hey, can I stop yet, you know? No, and come on now, I'm getting tired, can I stop yet? No, and the kids love it. But that silly and stupid illustration helps them understand. And finally, I'll say, when can I stop? And of course, they'll say, never. And I'll say, what number is that? And usually in the crowd, somebody will pop up with infinity. And of course, I say, yeah, exactly. And sometimes beyond. But no, that's not what we're talking about here with Buzz Lightyear. Uh, no, we get to infinity and we, and we get there and they understand the concept. Hey, I'm throwing nothing in. And when can I stop? Well, never. The room can hold an infinite amount of nothing. Hence, anything except zero divided by zero is infinity. So again, I teach them both. But I think it's just a neat little thing. It helps your students understand why zero divided by anything is zero. It actually refreshes their memory as to what is going on in regular division. And then it also helps them understand that when you're dividing by zero, the answer then is infinity or another acceptable answer, undefined. Hey, it's just a simple little thing, but it's something you can have fun with in your classroom. You can impress your students with it. They'll be like, wow, that's really cool. They'll enjoy it, uh, and you'll also be teaching them math. Hey, we've got lots of free resources for you at MyMathLight.com. Uh, you know, it's our mission and our desire to be a help to math teachers out there. So we're MathLight, and we're trying to be a help to you.